I love this saying, anything worth doing is worth doing right. So when it comes to selecting the right screw or nail for that next big project around the house, how do you know which one is the best? Which one is gonna save you the most time and money in the long run and allow you to get the project done right the first time? Today we're gonna to be testing seven different types of nails and screws for different qualities to see which one is the best. Before we begin the holding strength test, we need to kick off our corrosion resistance test since it'll take 48 hours to get the results. I'll be using a hydrogen peroxide vinegar and salt mix, which is very powerful as far as being an oxidizer. I'll be using this on each one of the screws and nails to evaluate how effective the coatings are at resisting oxidation. I'll be applying several coats of this powerful mix over the next 48 hours. It's only been 30 seconds and two of the nails are already rusting because they are untreated and they are not designed for treated lumber or exposure to harsh elements. The first test we'll be conducting is to test the holding strength of each type of nail and then the holding strength of each screw. I'll be using untreated 2x4s that are all from the same stack of lumber to help make sure that the test results are accurate. Since wood varies a lot, we'll be testing seven samples of each type of nail and throwing out the high and the low test numbers to get rid of the outliers. I'll be driving the nails and screws completely through the 2x4. After that, I'll spray paint the test samples black so we can easily see the nails and the screws when they begin to lose grip. We'll also assess just how much residual strength and holding power remains in each type of faster once they begin to lose grip. So what gives a nail its holding power? When a nail is pounded into the wood, it displaces the wood fibers. The pressure exerted against the shank by the displaced wood provides a holding strength. So does shank design really make any difference on holding power? Well, we're about to find out. This test is designed to apply a pulling force in a smooth control manner. To test each fastener, I'll place each sample in the test jig holder and then begin the test. The first nail we'll be testing is the 16D common nail, which is designed for framing. Only costing five cents each, it's the least expensive nail we'll be testing. Since it does not have any sort of protective coating, it shouldn't be used for pressure treated lumber or applications where rust is of concern. So let's see how much holding power we have with this nail. The first nail began to move at 120 pounds, however it was very interesting to see that the force required to remove the nail entirely required 141 pounds of force. The second nail didn't do nearly as well, losing grip at only 110 pounds compared to 120 pounds for the first nail. The third nail did a very impressive job requiring 164 pounds, beating the first two samples by a sizable amount. The fourth sample only required 98 pounds of force and was the lowest of the seven samples tested. The fifth nail required 168 pounds, the most force of all the seven samples. The sixth nail only required 139 pounds, which is very close to the average for this type of nail. The seventh and final nail required 134 pounds, so the category average after throwing out the high and the low weight amounts was only 131 pounds. We'll be testing the 16D coated smooth shank sinker next. Even though they are coated, they aren't supposed to be used in treated lumber and applications where rust is of concern. So let's see if they offer more holding power than the uncoated sinkers. The first nail began to move at 277 pounds. That's more than 100 pounds stronger than the strongest uncoated nail. The second nail was only 8 pounds less than the first one, requiring 269 pounds, which is pretty impressive. The third one was down a little bit more at 245 pounds, which is still pretty impressive. The fourth one was only 199 pounds, which is the lowest of the seven samples tested, so this one was thrown out. The fifth one was up slightly to 219 pounds, which is slightly below average for this type of nail. The sixth one was back up to 250 pounds, which is very close to the average for this type of nail. So after throwing out the high and the low samples, the coating gave the nails an extra 109 pounds of holding force. Very impressive. Up next, we'll be testing the Hot Dip 16D galvanized nails, which are designed for pressure treated lumber and exterior use. While it doesn't claim to offer more holding strength, let's see if this galvanized coating helps offer more holding power over uncoated and coated sinkers. The first galvanized smooth shank nail totally blew away the coated and uncoated nails, delivering a jaw dropping 488 pounds of holding force. I had no idea that the galvanized coating would help this much. Much. The second one dropped to 393 pounds, which still beat the coated nails by quite a large margin. The third one was down even more to 280 pounds, which is still way above the average for the coated sinkers.
The fourth one did do a little bit better at 327 pounds, but still below the average for this type of nail. Wow, the fifth one required 535 pounds. That's nearly twice as much as the best coated sinker. The sixth one was the lowest of the samples, only requiring 237 pounds. The seventh and final nail did a great job at 422 pounds. So just by adding the galvanized coating, the amount of holding strength was 382 pounds on average, which is 249 pounds more than the uncoated nail and 140 pounds more than the coated sinker. I'm really surprised by these results. Costing nine cents each, these galvanized spiral shank nails are advertised for patios and decks, which is typically going to be a much harder type of lumber than we'll be using. However, it's gonna be interesting to see if the spiral shank helps with providing more holding power. The first galvanized spiral shank nail didn't do too well, losing grip at only 108 pounds. The second one didn't do much better, only requiring 130 pounds to remove the nail. The third one is up slightly to 149 pounds, but still not very impressive compared to the other nails. The fourth was almost the same as the third, requiring 147 pounds. The fifth was really low at only 91 pounds and was the lowest sample taken in the category, so I went ahead and threw this one out. The sixth was back up a little to 119 pounds, which is slightly below the category average. The seventh one was the best yet at 173 pounds. So it just goes to show that the spiral shank nail just doesn't do very well in soft wood. I believe it would do much better in a harder type of wood as it's designed to be used for. Costing 6.5 pennies per nail, these uncoated ring shank nails are designed for pole barns and load bearing structures. Since they're uncoated, they're not designed for pressure treated lumber or in applications where rust is an issue. The ring shank design is supposed to offer optimal holding power in soft and medium wood. So let's see if this nail design is gonna offer more holding power. The first uncoated ring shank nail required 425 pounds, which is very close to the average for the galvanized nails. The second one required 357 pounds, which is a little lower than the first one, but still very impressive. The third one was even better than the first two, requiring 462 pounds of force. Very impressive. The fourth one was a bit lower at 385 pounds, but that's still pretty remarkable. The fifth one was the best of all the samples, requiring 491 pounds. I find it pretty amazing that one nail has that much holding power. The sixth one was the lowest at only 227 pounds. The seventh and final nail was 341 pounds. What was very interesting is that the galvanized smooth shank nails seemed to continue to have decent holding strength even after they began to slip. However, the ring shank nails really lost a lot of holding strength after the nail began to move. I really like using these three and a half inch drywall screws for those small projects around the home that require a lot of holding power. So will these number 10 coarse thread drywall screws provide more holding power than any of the nails we've tested? At six pennies per screw, it's actually less expensive than some of the nails we tested. The first drywall screw delivered a very impressive holding strength at 703 pounds, beating all the nails by well over 100 pounds. The second one was even better at 841 pounds, really highlighting the amazing holding power of this type of fastener. The third one required 693 pounds, which is still very impressive. The fourth one did quite a bit better than the third one at 758 pounds. The fifth one was slightly below average for this category at 695 pounds. The sixth one is up slightly to 699 pounds. 
The seventh and final drywall screw did pretty good at 743 pounds. So the drywall screw actually beat all the nails. Very similar to the ring shank nail, the drywall had great holding power up until it began to slip and then quickly lost all of its holding power as the wood fibers were ripped loose. Costing 13 cents each, deck screws are designed to provide tremendous holding power and resistance to rust and corrosion. So how much better are these over nails and do they offer more holding strength than drywall screws? Let's find out. Wow, the first deck screw required a very impressive 973 pounds to remove, which is more than any of the drywall screw samples. Man, the second deck screw required 1,299 pounds. That is an amazing amount of holding power. It would take about 10 uncoated sinkers to provide this much strength. The third one required 792 pounds, which is the lowest of the seven samples. The fourth one was way back up to 1,174 pounds. Very impressive. The fifth one was down a little to 1,001 pounds. The sixth one did extremely well at 1,281 pounds. The seventh and final deck screw was down a little to 1,059 pounds. So after throwing out the highest and lowest numbers for each fastener, the galvanized spiral shank only required 131 pounds of force, which is the worst of the bunch. The uncoated sinker was slightly better at 133 pounds. The coated nails showed a huge advantage over the uncoated ones. The galvanized smooth shank and uncoated ring shank did even better, both delivering nearly 400 pounds of holding strength. The drywall screw really impressed with providing nearly twice the holding power as the nails. Finally, the deck screws provided nearly three times as much holding strength as the strongest nail and over 400 pounds pounds more strength than the drywall screw. There's many different ways to look at different types of fastener from a value perspective. If you consider the number of pounds of holding force per penny, the drywall screw is the best value at 114 pounds of holding power per penny based upon the price I paid. Even though the deck screws are very expensive, they came in second place. The ring shank nails also did great, costing one penny for 59 pounds of holding force. Obviously, this is just one perspective and there are many other things to consider. Regarding the corrosion test, after 48 hours and 10 applications of the hydrogen product, oxide vinegar and salt mix, the most rust formed on the uncoated sinker and the ring shank nail. The coated sinker and drywall screw had a small amount of corrosion, and the deck screw and the two galvanized nails did not have any visible signs of corrosion. Well, when it's time to tackle that next project around the house, I definitely feel like I'm better informed, and having the right type of coating makes a huge difference, not only regarding corrosion control, but also regarding holding power. I was really surprised at how much extra holding power these nails had with just having some galvanizing on them. Also, regarding the screws, it's not very practical to use screws for every project, but whenever you can use a screw, it's amazing just how much more holding power it provides. I get all my video ideas from you guys. You guys recommended this one, and I really appreciate it. You guys have the best video ideas, so please keep those ideas coming, and I'll keep making videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to next time.